we were talking about the beautiful similarities that are there <clears throat> not necessarily similarities but swami establishing that similarity because otherwise it's very difficult <laughs> to uh, you know establish that because even if you see the difference between the rama avatar and krishna avatar mm. the personality is so different and uh, swami would say that which changes is for momentary joy mm. the devotees of that era enjoyed that personality but that which is eternal is the essence and if you see the essence of the avatar continues after every avatar but that is why you know the visions of rama the mm. visions of uh, such insights have to be given uh, i recall one of the old devotees used to say i think he came in the 60s and the time when he was visiting there was a pandit who was there in the ashram and swami said that now that you are here why don't you give discourses every day in the evening right so that everybody is indulged I mean is kept busy in some form of satsang so every day he would give a discourse on something something from the ramayana or the mahabharata or something like that so one day he was speaking of the ramayana and when he was saying so suddenly swami stopped him and said no it didn't happen like that <laughs> <laughs> so the man looked at his books and he said but swami this is what is mentioned and he said no no it didn't happen like that and then swami said it happened like this <laughs> <laughs> the scholar was stunned he said swami how do you know <laughs> because i was there so he said i am the same rama <laughs> right that authority with which yes. he could say and in fact uh, i think in our undergraduate uh, one of the books that we study is swami's ramakatha rasamayani yes. and what is told then is a very beautiful uh, approach to ramakatha rasamayani and that is why as devotees all of us must read the ramakatha rasamayani right uh, if you look at how valmiki went about writing his version of the ramayana as we said you know his journey began with that transformation yes. and like anybody who transforms they always look back at their past with a little bit of heaviness mm-hmm. so it is believed that valmiki always thought that i was an imperfect person mm-hmm. and this thought occurred in his mind could there be a perfect person right could there be a perfect human being so this was a thought that was going on in his mind can there be a perfect human being can there be a perfect human being and that is when he has the vision of uh, lord brahma who comes and tells him that this is the purpose of your uh, birth that you are going to write the epic about the most perfect human being mm. about the purushottama himself and then he tells the whole story is going to flash in front of your eyes and you're going to write it so his entire narration of the ramayana is the story of the perfect human being perfect person mm. Mm. right not of the avatar yes. but a perfect human perfect being perfect man yeah right mm. and then when tulsi das comes mm. or later when kamba comes yes. and writes his kamba ramayanam these are uh, you know people who are looking at their lord they are narrating a story of their lord who has come in a human form yes. so the narration is glorious the narration is uh, with the understandable amount of uh, glorification yes. and the worshipful attitude with which mm. it is written And then you look at the Ramakatha Rasamayani. As Swami <laughs> told that pundit, I was there. <laughs> Autobiography. Right? And it was not written merely from the point of view of Rama. It was mm. also written with the emotions of each of those characters being brought out. Mm. And if you read the Rama Ramakatha Rasamayani, many times you will find the passages where Swami is talking directly to you. Yes. He is saying, "This is the devotion I want. Mm. This is what I was pointing to." Mm. right this is what i meant when i did this or when i said this and uh, that is the you know the benefit of listening about the ramayana from swami the nuances that are otherwise lost mm-hmm. or the focus that is otherwise lost like when we were doing the satsang on the ramkatha as part of a radio program if you read if you see any of the serialized versions of the ramayana you know the ayodhya kanda comes of balakanda comes of quickly because they're all excited about coming to the uh, you know the, the, the forest, forest and the, that is when the excitement comes yes. the, uh, the demons come demons and the come. battles come mm. but if you see swami's ramkatha mm. so much emphasis is on the portion between the dialogue between rama and bharata yes mm. right so much swami writes about it because from swami's point of view that is what is important right so much swami writes about the interaction between shabari and rama mm. so much swami writes about guha because when you read that version with that uh, you know weightage being given to different episodes you start thinking oh so all this was so that he could meet all of these people on the way 
Otherwise, we think, oh, all of this is so that one day he'll go and kill Ravana. <laughs> that was also had to happen. But the whole play was so that he could meet Shabari, he could meet Guha, he could meet Sugriva, he could meet uh, Jatayu, he could meet uh, Sampat. Uh, you know, Sampat. all uh, all of these. It was a story of the Lord going out in search of his devotees. This so recently, true. when we went to Shivam mm-hmm. to document because the uh, Golden Jubilee is right. coming. And um, there was a beautiful incident that they narrated sitting in the lawn of uh, Satya Muti Garu's house, which is right next to Shivam. Mm-hmm. So Swami was seated there and then um, Swami made a very beautiful declaration. He said, only in the time of two avatars this has happened. And he said, only in, in the Ram avatar, I brought people whom, who were needed for the mission. And the second time is now. In this avatar, I brought you all. Wow. I brought you all because each of you has a role to play in my mission. And and you know, he he took monkeys, <laughs> and 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 he created marvels out of them. And I think when we look at uh, ourselves, you know, we are all dust. <laughs> and you know, he has given us little little roles to play. And it's only because of you know uh, his grace that uh, we are here doing whatever we are doing. And you know, as you are mentioning about. Uh, uh, Ramkatha Raswani and that is that is so profound you know when you read Ramkatha Raswani you feel he's telling you right you know I think uh, one very powerful uh, uh, trait of Rama Swami says is omniscience omnipotence and omnifelicity omnifelicity means everyone feels that he's my own and I think and that, he's talking to you he's talking to in you in every gesture and every uh, word yeah and I think that is so powerful I think I, I really urge you know we really urge all the readers to read Ramkatha Raswaini because you will feel that oh, here is the message that Swami is telling me because Swami again and again has mentioned that Ramkatha Raswaini the story of Rama is for us to know how we should conduct in our personal lives in our uh, uh, filial lives in our social lives how we should be in our family what should be the relationship between husband and wife between brother and sister between sisters between co-wives and I think between all the human relationships are covered in Ramayana and that is the reason why as you mentioned Swami has spent so much time uh, focusing on every character and uh, when you look at each character such powerful messages emerge uh, take the case of uh, for example Kaikai now the whole world despises Kaikai the whole world does not want to even utter the name Kaikai but Swami mentions when uh, Rama was a child they say that Kaikai loved Rama so much it was Kaikai who taught Rama the art of uh, Astra and Shastra Swami says it was Kaikai who took so much interest, Kaike could not live without Rama. Such was uh, Kaike's love. And to when, when you think about it, how could it just change in just one moment that, you know, she wanted uh, Bharata to become the king and, you know, banish Rama to the forest. Even, you know, at a personal level, so it, it seems so, so weird that, you know, Kaike Badly could... Badly plotted story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so unreal when, when you look at, you know, how they were, how that family was. And Swami says... You know why it happened so? It is because when KK was teaching Rama uh, the art of archery, Swami says that it was Rama who pleaded with KK and said, Mother, I have a big mission to fulfill and you have to play a very, very important role. I have come to establish dharma. I have to go and I, I have to weed out a dharma. I have to weed out the rakshasas and you have to help me in this. You have to plan that plot. You have the boons with you uh, that Dasharatha has given. So you have to orchestrate this for me. And in a three session, Swami was narrating this. He says, he goes to Kaikai and tells her, this is what I want you to do. And I know only you are capable of doing yes. this because you have such love for me. Yes. Oh. And then Rama says, for ages to come, people will hate you. Yes. Nobody will name uh, their yes. child after, your, yes. after you. Yes. yes. Are you ready to do this for me? Yes. So... I mean, that is the thing. I mean, perhaps we have no idea of the love that uh, KK had for Rama to be able to take so much of insult, so much of ignominy, so much of ridicule for generations. And I think that shows us what is truly love for God mean. You know, if, if you really love the Lord, nothing will matter to you. Your fame, your name, your wealth, your uh, reputation, nothing matters. If his will is to be done, 
it is for the sake of rama it is for the sake of dharma and you know i am nothing and i think that is such a powerful uh, message and you, you look at so many other characters take for example urmila you know when urmila uh, when lakshmana was living for the forest urmila takes a vow from lakshmana saying promise me that for the next 14 years you are not going to think of me even for a second i mean which wife will tell that which wife will say that you know i just don't want you to think about me at all because you are with rama do that duty well and i should not become a hindrance in your seva to rama take the case of mandavi mandavi bharata's wife when bharata decided to uh, lead an austere life in nandigrama mandavi said oh, why should i live in the palace so she also came and she also lived along with bharata and she also led the kind of life that sita was leading mm-hmm. in uh, with rama in uh, uh, in the forest and the character about him we hardly talk about shatrughna swami says bharata was supposed to rule the kingdom but bharata was there fully in rama chintana he was fully only thinking about rama because worshiping rama he could not he was not in a frame of mind to do the administration of the kingdom it was only because of shatrughna that the kingdom was safe because as his name uh, said you know people feared shatrus enemies feared ayodhya because shatrughna was in control and then they say ramaraja began in shatrughna's rule shatrughna's rule oh, okay yeah. so he was the one who was ruling <laughs> exactly so he, here was one who was so devoted to bharata that okay let let bharata do whatever penance he, he wants to do let rama go let lakshmana go but i will take up everything that has to be done and do it for the love of my brothers and i think uh take every character that way uh, you know you cannot but uh uh allow your heart to melt and 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 seek uh, bhagwan's grace to see if he can imbibe even you know an iota of the virtues that each of these characters uh, of ravana poses take the case of jatayu you know jatayu being a bird she said what is the point of my life if i cannot protect a woman being abducted by a demon if if i cannot do that what what is the point of uh, my wings what is the point of my strength and and what kind of funeral did jatayu get lord rama kept jatayu on his lap i don't think anyone has had that kind of a funeral so let's take up any character of rama and if you read ramakatha rasavahini the way these characters emerge and speak to you that would be the message that swami is giving each one of us isn't it in fact um, is a very beautiful uh, analogy swami gives in one of his discourses he says it's like a village drama is going on a village drama is going on in which the person who is playing the role of ravana his actual name is rama <laughs> <laughs> he says rama is the person who is playing the role of ravana so even in the ramayana everybody is rama everybody is Uh, the same but they're playing different roles <laughs> right and you know talking about the lesser known characters or uh, redemption of certain characters mm-hmm. i think in my uh, undergraduate i'd heard this discourse where swami was speaking about the killing of wali mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right and the way swami described it it will fill you with awe at the character that wali yes. was right. right swami says that uh, you know we all know the story he hides behind the bush he shoots that arrow and wali mm-hmm. falls and then rama goes in front of him and wali asks him rama why did you do this mm-hmm. right because for centuries to come people will question you mm-hmm. you could have come before me i would have yes. have been happy to die at your you know hand and rama says no this is all part of what had to happen so it had to happen and then wali is like uh, you know so moved he said Uh, I mean I understand if you have come to stand by Sugriva I understand that I must have done something really wrong and I repent wholeheartedly for it and he calls Angada and he says that you know you should not have any enmity towards yes. Sugriva you know you should uh, treat him like your father and all of that so he is like completely uh, filled with remorse and transformed and Swami says that Rama tells him Wali I will give you back your life 
right i will you know now that you have changed your mind i will give you back your life and vali tells him rama do you think i'm a fool <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he says do you think i'm a fool mm. that fortune yes. that the great dasharatha did not have yes i have mm. of dying in your presence mm. <laughs> and he says i i have that much wisdom that i should not let go of this opportunity amazing imagine i mean every character of the ramayana that way when when swami says i know the feeling which was going in their mind mm. that's what it is i recall you know we uh, we had uh, ramanavmi this year on 30th of march mm. when i was in my second year of post graduate 2004 ramanavmi coincidentally fell on the fell same, on the same uh, date, uh, date you know 30th of march okay. and we had put up a program in front of swami and we wanted to uh, enact the story of the kevat the mm. boatman mm. right it's a, it's a very beautiful one of the most fascinating yes. stories you know the vow that rama takes as an avatar is that i'm going to behave human right right all through so whenever the rishis come and uh, mm. you know try to praise rama rama says i don't know what you're speaking about yeah. i'm after all <laughs> prince of ayodhya yeah, yeah. you know the son of dashratha <laughs> and they say yeah yeah we know that <laughs> you know so all through he tries to uh, yeah. maintain the integrity of that character that he had taken <laughs> so when he comes to this boatman the boatman recognizes that this is not an ordinary human being and he knows that no amount i mean no uh, worshipful acts directed towards rama is going to be accepted right he wants to do the pada puja of lord rama he says rama is not going to accept because he is going to say i am after all a you know human being i am in the role of a mendicant and all of that so the boatman comes and tells him i heard that merely by touching touch of your feet a rock turned into a woman <laughs> you know referring to ahalya's uh, redemption <clears throat> i'm a poor boatman i have one boat <laughs> right with that with that i'm providing for my family no if you get into my boat and it turns into a woman <laughs> i can't handle I, i cannot handle that <laughs> i lose my livelihood and i have one more woman to take care of he said so rama understands he says what do you want me to do he says nothing i will just wash your feet <laughs> right i'll wash your feet and then you get into my boat so rama says okay and then he washes his feet and silently it seems he takes that water and sends it to his family he says drink it there is no tirtham there is no water holier than this right and then he takes him on the boat and then when he gets off uh, rama you know rama becomes very restless because he doesn't have anything to give for this favor that uh, this boatman has offered so seeing this restlessness mother sita recognizes that this is what is running in rama's mind so she removes one of the rings that she has and gives it to rama and says you know and immediately rama gives it to that kevat and he says what are you doing don't you know there is a, a dharma within you know in every profession mm. rama says what are you saying that a barber doesn't charge a barber a dobi <laughs> doesn't charge a dobi oh you know he says that is a dharma which is maintained in every, every profession mm. within the profession you cannot charge that rama says but i don't understand but why shouldn't you take from me he says because we are in the same profession <laughs> and rama says what do you mean he says i take people from this bank to that bank are you not the lord who takes us from this bank of samsara to that bank of samsara he says when we both are in the same profession how can i take from <laughs> right and uh, swami would narrate this and say this is like you know the one the purest form of devotion being expressed and wisdom so we had uh, wanted to display you know enact this scene so we wanted to do it little differently so what we did was we had only one mo- one person doing a mono act okay oh. right so the he whole is the kevat he is the kevat mm. right and the whole thing was in telugu the boy was very good at telugu so he had written the dialogues and all that so only the kevat is going to act and all the dialogues that the kevat tells lord rama the boy delivers it looking at swami okay <laughs> <laughs> and swami was so overwhelmed when it was being done and swami was swami was voicing you know what that boy was telling because at that moment i think swami was <laughs> just just uh, re uh, reliving the emotions of that uh, simple boatman yemina bhagyamu sakshatu sri ramachandrude sita lakshmana sametamuga nadi idaraniki na navavaddaku vacharu rama nee seva chese bhagyamu 
నాకు ఈ విధంగా ప్రసాదించావా రా రామా ఈ నావ మీద ఈ నదిని మనం దాటుదాం కానీ రామచంద్ర అరణ్యమునందు సంచరించున్నప్పుడు నీ పాదము తాకి రాతి నాతిగా మారిందని విన్నాను నాకు ఈ నావయే జీవనాధారము ఇప్పుడు నీ పాదము తాకి నా నావ నాతిగా మారిన నా భార్యాబిడ్డలు ఏ విధంగా పోషించేది రామా అందుకనే నీ పాదములు నా నావ మీద అడుగు పెట్టడానికి ముందు నీ పాదములు ఈ నీటితో కడగడానికి అనుమతిని ప్రసాదించమని కోరుకుంటున్నాను రామా దస్ క్లెన్సింగ్ ద ఫీట్ ఆఫ్ ద లార్డ్ విత్ ద హోలీ వాటర్ ద గ్యాంజస్ ద బోట్స్మెన్ ఫెరీడ్ దెమ్ అక్రాస్ ద రివర్ అండ్ యాజ్ లార్డ్ రామా గాట్ డౌన్ ఆన్ ద అదర్ బ్యాంక్ హీ ఫెల్ట్ దట్ హీ షుడ్ గివ్ సంథింగ్ to the boatman and as his disposition was mother sita understood the situation and she immediately removed the ring from her finger and gave it to the lord and the lord in all his love and compassion was just about to give the ring when rama ee vaddu nunchi aa vaddu ku daatinchinanduku naaku mulyamuga angulikamani istunnava aina ఒకే వృత్తి వారి దగ్గర నుంచి నేను మూల్యముని ఏ విధంగా స్వీకరించను నేను ఈ జనులను ఈ వడ్డు నుంచి ఆ వడ్డుకు దాటిస్తే శ్రీరామచంద్రుడు ఈ జీవకోటిని ఈ భవసాగరమును దాటిస్తాడు రామా నీ వృత్తి నా వృత్తి ఒకటి నేను నీ దగ్గర నుంచి ఈ అంగులీకమును ఏ విధంగా స్వీకరించను రామా యునో దిస్ ఇస్ రామకథ రసవాహిని మీన్స్ దాట్ ఎసెన్స్ is in these characters guha talking about guha there's another beautiful mention in ramkatha raswaini swami says i mean his simple devotion is so deep um <clears throat> he says rama you should come to our uh, city mm. because the city of nishada where he is a chief he says you should come there and you should bless us and then rama says see according to my father's uh, this thing i cannot go into any cities i have to stay mm. only in the forest so i cannot come into cities and towns i have to live in the forest so i cannot come but uh, the guha immediately said no but you can do one thing then he says what is it he says here is a shimsupa tree mm-hmm. and he says it's i believe a tall like an, a redwood uh, indian um, redwood tree he says you climb on that tree okay and you just look in the direction of my city wow. that is enough wow you just look into my city and town and that's enough to bring all the prosperity when you listen to this such a beautiful story you're reminded of what is mentioned in the bible there's a story from the bible where there's a roman officer who comes to christ and he says uh, my servant is not keeping well can you please cure him and uh, christ says okay i'll come then he says no that is not required he says but you want me to cure your servant i'm ready to come he says see i am uh, i hold a rank in the roman uh, army and there are superiors and there are people who are below me when they command i have to do when i command others have to do it so you need not come you just have to say the word and my servant will be cured and then lord uh, then christ turns to his disciples and says see this is faith and he tells him your faith has cured your servant you go home <laughs> so that one look that one glance is so amazing and that uh, was known to guha hmm. see he knew that one look of lord rama and the whole city will have their prosperity you're talking about looks of course it's not completely connected to what you're saying hmm. the other beautiful episode that swami narrates and gives the inner meaning of that when rama is in the ashram of sage bharadwaja right right they're all in the garb of uh, mendicants mm. and uh, swami says you know this tradition was followed uh, not only in kulanthal even in that time <laughs> because the men and women would be sitting in separate quarters but all the uh, you know the rishi patnis and uh, there was a sort of a right. wall dividing wall divide. mm. all the rishi patnis were very keen to know who's rama because they've heard so much about him mm. Mother Sita is in their quarters with them and all of these rishis and uh, you know the, the people in the ashram and also Rama and Lakshmana are seated there so they come to Mother Sita and ask who is Rama in this so they start describing the men who are sitting there you know is it this person who has a smile like this she says no 
you know, is it this person? You know, he has a beard like this. I don't know what they would have told. <laughs> and she keeps saying no, no. Then it, they come to Lakshmana. Is he this? He, I mean, Lakshmana is supposed to be very, very uh, handsome and very sharp in his features. So they describe Lakshmana. She says no. Then finally they come to Rama and they start describing him, you know, like the color of the dark uh, rainy cloud and all of that. When they describe Rama, Sita puts her head down and smiles. <laughs> right? She doesn't say no, she doesn't say yes. And what a beautiful interpretation Swami gives for this. He says that the mind, when it is trying to recognize Atma, it sees all the experiences and objects in the world and keeps saying neti, 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 neti. Mm-hmm. When it finally comes face to face with the Atma, that Sakshatkar happens, the only answer can be silence. <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> I think as you read the Ram, the Ram Katha Rasavaini, uh, these uh, jewels keep <laughs> uh, coming out from every page actually, you know. Uh, I think you, as you read Ramgatha Raswaini, you will find so many such characters. Take the case of Shabari, for example. I mean, uh, Bhagwan goes on describing about uh, uh, Shabari's uh, piety. In fact, uh, there is this beautiful story um, we hear in Parthi when Swami was walking one day and he comes to comes back inside his room, and he's so thrilled. His face is glowing. And he's like, uh, hurriedly goes and sits on the sofa and uh, he opens an old bag Mm. which was given, uh, which he had collected in the darshan. And he was so happy because um, it had groundnuts in it. (laughs) (laughs) He said, and he he patiently took and ate, uh, they uh, boil it in a particular way. And um, so Swami was enjoying those groundnuts and everybody was seeing this and they said, oh, this is wonderful. And then what he said after that was more interesting. He said, you know, keep this bag carefully Mm. because tomorrow I have to go and return it back. (laughs) This is an old lady who had her own farm and she would grow these groundnuts. And I believe every year she would come, take the harvest from that and she would prepare these groundnuts and bring to Swami. And so, uh, with so much of relish, Swami took each of those groundnuts and dutifully returned the bag to her. 